We are still at the beginning stages here at Eat, Drink, Explore Media of attempting anyway to do one full month with a vegetarian diet. Now, not a vegan diet, so we are including dairy and egg products in our meals. And now I wanna warn you, we're about to show you some images from the Humane Society that you may find disturbing. And in this video right here, it is images like this that has us seeking good, organic, sustainable, humane farms from which to buy our products. So let's turn to the source of this video. We are joined now via video Skype by Matthew Prescott. He is the director of food policy at the Humane Society in Washington, DC. And he is here today to explain dairy labeling and humane treatment of farm animals, really so we can all be more aware when shopping for groceries. Welcome, Matthew. Hi, thanks for having me on. Is there one set labeling system consumers should get to know where they can just check a carton of milk or a carton of eggs and it will tell them what they need to know in this area? Unfortunately not. Um, you know, terms like humane and, and animal welfare are kind of broadly used, but people have such high expectations when they hear a term like humane that for many of the labels that use this, the animals might not be getting exactly what consumers expect them to be getting. And so um, it's certainly good to look out for things like organic. That might mean something for the animals, although probably not much, or certified humane or animal welfare approved. Um, but in general, the best way to avoid supporting uh, cruelty in the dairy industry or in any other uh, animal agribusiness industry is to look for a non-animal version of the product you're trying to buy, like soy milk or almond milk instead of cow's milk uh, or you know veggie burger instead of a hamburger. Right. Now, you mentioned organic. Uh, words like organic, sustainable, humane, all of those terms you see them on packaging quite a bit as marketing tools. Is certain states I know, like California here, have rules regarding those terms. Is there a national standard? Um, there are standards for terms like organic, but when it comes to animal welfare, unfortunately, there aren't any national standards. There are some independent labeling systems like Certified Humane or Animal Welfare Approved is another one. Whole Foods has their own labeling system. But for uh, animal cruelty, there's no set federal standard, unfortunately. Now, there is an animal welfare rating program. And if I understand it correctly, it has five steps, right? Can you go through those with us? Yeah, so Whole Foods helped develop this animal welfare rating program, which uh, requires farmers to adhere to certain animal welfare standards in order to sell their products at Whole Foods. And so if you give the animals a certain minimum requirement of care, you get a, a, a level one rating. If you give them a little bit better care in some areas, you get level two and so on. Um, so it's very good, but people should um, be a little bit cautious about these systems because as positive as they are, um, there still is room for animal abuse all along the way. Um, some of the, the labeling systems are very good for animals and they might reduce the likelihood of, say, animals being confined in tiny cages or eliminate that possibility. But in other areas, they might not um, add up to what consumers expect out of a product labeled humane. Animals can still be cruelly transported or cruelly slaughtered or suffer in other areas. And so people should just be very cautious when they're uh, looking at that. Now, the Humane Society of the United States has a website dedicated to this issue. For the egg industry, people can go to the website egglabels.com to look through what the def different definitions of the labels are. Um, and there's some information about dairy on there as well. And for people interested in trying to avoid these products entirely or to reduce the amount of these products they eat, they can go to humanesociety.org slash meat free for all kinds of recipes and product advice and, and uh, all that good stuff. Now the Humane Society has some video that you shared with us, uh, disturbing to say the least in some cases. Uh, that is not necessarily representative of all farms, right? And that's why you guys go through and have some of these different uh, rating procedures and such so that the people that are uh, working to be as humane as possible uh, can get their product out on the market and be recognized. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, every time we've had an undercover investigator in farm, they've found animals being abused in awful ways. And that goes mm. for even some smaller farms that you might not expect that on. 
Uh, on one smaller farm, for example, we found animals being moved with forklifts when they were too sick to stand or walk, leading to the biggest meat recall in U.S. history. That was um, down in Southern California, right? Southern California, that's right. And that wasn't even on one of the massive type industrial farms you would picture when you hear factory farm. We wish it were the case that we would go in to some of these smaller facilities and find that everything looked good and be able to, um, you know, give them a, uh, an A-OK -okay with regard to animal welfare, but unfortunately that hasn't been the case. Now that's not to say that all farms are cruel. There are certainly lots of farmers out there all across the country that are doing things right or trying to do things right and they should be applauded for that. Um, but unfortunately that seems to be the exception to the rule rather than the norm. Is there any sort of push in Washington to uh, get some standards in place and uh, a team on the ground that can monitor these situations for omnivores and uh, vegetarians uh, like myself who, uh, you know, enjoy a good cheese and, you know, those sorts of things and, and can feel a little better about their purchases? Absolutely. Um, you know, the Humane Society of the United States, one of the great things about us is that with 12 million supporters, we're kind of a big tent organization. And so we're composed of, uh, you know, vegans and vegetarians and, you know, millions of omnivores who, uh, you know, are like yourself, who, who maybe are trying to reduce the amount of meat they eat, but once in a while still consume it. And so we're working very hard to not only encourage people to move more in that direction and try to protect animals from some of the worst abuses they suffer, but also to try to develop more of these state or federal standards uh, that are so lacking. We're working right now alongside the egg industry to try to pass a federal law that would uh, standardize some of the labeling systems used in the egg industry to avoid some of the confusion that's out there now. We have a piece on uh, eatdrinkexplore.com right now that is uh, about backyard chickens, and uh, we posted it yesterday, and I cannot believe it just took off uh, across the nation with lots of uh, hits. I think some people, if they're raising the chickens, then they know how they're being treated, right? <laughs> so Matthew right. Prescott, he is the director of food policy there at the Humane Society in Washington, D.C., uh, thank you so much for joining us here at Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.